Hey students and parents, I thought I would just share a video message with you today, talk to you instead of just typing everything. And uh, since we've been doing video lessons for a while now, and it kind of looks like we're gonna be doing a little bit longer with them as well, I think it's really worth it for us to try to make the video lesson experience as good as we can. So I've been doing some technical stuff here and I'll show you what some of that is in a minute but I've been trying to make the experience as good as I can. And yet I think there's a couple things you can also do on your end to help improve it as well. So I wanna share those with you today. And I think it's really worth it because if we're, I mean, we're gonna be doing this a little bit longer, but even in the future, once we're doing in-person, in the same room lessons, I think video lessons could be really useful. I mean, like what if, schedules go crazy and you just can't drive your student to lesson or maybe you get a little bit sick and you probably shouldn't come to lesson but you could do a lesson if it's over video um, i've had people travel and do their lessons via video um, while they're on vacation in fact i've got a student in hawaii now you know because you can do it via video that way but so i think it's a useful tool is what i'm trying to say basically and so you've heard me talking recently about original sound and there's a little bit of confusion around that understandably it's it, it's a little bit confusing but in zoom i think all of you are on zoom now and there's some really good reasons for that but the original sound thing is a pretty important piece of it and here's the main thing you need to remember with it you've got to go into the app and before you ever start a meeting hit that gear icon for settings, just go into settings before you ever enter a meeting and in the meeting area for settings, look for original sound and you just wanna enable original sound in the settings. And then you also have to enable it in the meeting. And that's what's so confusing. You, th you feel like you've already enabled it in settings and, but it's not working. So do it in settings. Then when we get in the meeting, you'll be able to turn it on and use it. But if you use your Zoom for other, other reasons, you can turn it off. So if you don't want original sound, because for most things, you don't want the original sound. You want it kind of, you want Zoom being smart and turning down background noise. But when it thinks your guitar or your piano is background noise, it makes it sound really weird on my end. It probably sounds fine to you because I have original sound turned off and I'm sending you like my direct high quality piano sound going to you and my microphone and stuff but on my end it's hard to give you good feedback when zoom is making it sound all warbly and weird okay so that's one thing original sound but the other thing is um, placement of where you should place your camera and your microphone because that also makes a big difference so this view right here this is the main one that your students or you see when we start a lesson and I like it because I can talk right to you. I've got a monitor, a second monitor right here, right next to, right under the camera. So I can look at you when, when, when we're talking. It feels like we're talking face to face that way. And I can see your expressions and your posture and stuff like that. But then I've got my big display so I can still see your music over on the side and um, type your notes that I'm gonna email to you later. But um, that, you're not able to see my keys this is me in Zoom, and when I'm teaching in a Zoom lesson, you can't see my hands, but I'll just switch. I'm gonna hit a little key here, and now you can see my hands. I can play for you a little bit, show you fingering, you know, tell you, I'll oh, use the two finger in first inversion, and there's that, and, or just kind of demonstrate what we're playing. And then when I'm done with my hands, I can switch and look back at you and, and talk, so it's more personal. If all you could see is my hands, that would be very impersonal. And yet sometimes on with where you guys place your cameras, that's all I can see is your hands. And yet I don't want you to have to mess with two different cameras and, and goofy things like that. So I'm gonna show you some ideas of where you can place your camera to have it be the most effective. But while we're in Zoom here, I think I'll also just show you how I've got those two cameras, but then if we need to reference your music, I do a screen share and I can, I've got your music on my screen. I can point to stuff here. I can even, you know, mark it up. I'll, I'll use annotations to show you where to, where to mark your counting in. And it's useful for you guys to learn how to write your own 
counting or put your marks so I can say the sharp sign goes right there on the left side, whatever. Um, so it's been very useful. And I'll stop that screen share now. So that's what, what I do. Let's show you what you could do for your cameras to kind of be in the best position possible. I almost forgot. For you guitar players, you're thinking, well, keyboard view, I don't need that. Actually, I just used the keyboard view with a guitar player, talking about some music theory. But this is what it looks like when I'm playing guitar, you know, and I can, I often use screen sharing to show chord charts and things like that. But I can also play here and show my hands as we go. So uh, the face forward facing view works really well for guitar. This is a pretty good view. It's actually a really good view because I can turn and talk. I can look at the screen if I'm a student. Um, and then, so this would be like an iPad in um, selfie view. So I can, if I'm a student, I can see my teacher. And then you're looking down as I'm looking over a student's shoulder. I can see hand position. I might not be able to see every note, but I'm using my ears to hear a lot of that as well. But hand technique, how are they sitting, and then we can converse really easy talking this way. So this is really ideal. You could think of it as like looking over the shoulder. If you're standing next to a student and looking over their shoulder, that's pretty much the view that you're trying to get with your device if possible. Lots of times people do this with good intentions. One thing, it's vertical, which is not ideal. I prefer a horizontal view but also it's, it's hands, usually it's some of the hands, I won't be able to see the low end, and certainly I can't see the person's face at all. They might be able to see the screen when I'm talking, but um, I can't see them, so it's, it's not the best. And then um, the other thing that I, while we're talking, thinking about um, can they see the screen, bigger device is better. As you saw, a lot of times I share my screen, I'll do um, well, here I'm talking to you and you can't see my face. Never mind, I'm going to tell you this point when you can see my face. A lot of people use this view, and I think you're thinking that it's easy to see the hands, but um, as you can see from this perspective, it's really hard to see what key is being played because it's such a uh, steep angle. And um, it's good for hand position, but usually uh, I'm not seeing the face of the student at all. But I will come down here and put my face in there and tell you what I was going to say. If you can have a bigger screen, that's better because as you know from Zoom, I share the screen a lot. So if I'm typing chords or I wanna reference something on your music, you'll be able to understand that much better with a bigger screen. This is a common perspective, putting the, the camera behind the keys. And I think um, people are thinking that I'll be able to, you know, I can see it, the student can see the screen well, and I can see the keys, but it's it's backwards from the way I would normally look at keys. So it's a little bit hard to uh, really see what the student's playing. And usually I kind of am just viewing the torso of the student. I don't, I don't really have any face view, it's just hands. Often people will just do this, they'll put it on their music stand so I can hear their piano and I can see their face, um, but I don't really know anything about their position. And this is true with guitar and piano, like you could be holding a guitar and I wouldn't even know. Well, I would because I would hear it, but I don't know how you're holding it. I can't see your hands and I can't see your hand position on the piano. So this isn't really ideal either. Although it's nice to see your beautiful faces. So you might be wondering, how do I get my device in one of those positions? And there's a few solutions. This has been one of the harder things for people to figure out. And if you have a music stand, then some people have used a music stand if you can tighten it pretty good, then that can be something that you can raise up and place your laptop on it, or you can place it um, vertical and, and put a clip on the side of your iPad if you're using a a mobile device you can clip it to the music stand so you can get it up a little bit higher and still have it flat enough so it's pointing down and I can see the keys or if you have a, a microphone stand then there's some adapters that you can buy that are have a mounting clip for a tablet and it'll attach to a mic stand and that makes it very flexible you can position it where you want or a camera tripod there's also um, tablet mounting clips that will attach to a camera tripod and that allows you to be able to get it up a little bit higher or maybe even just 
a small little bit higher table that you can position off a little bit behind and to the side of you or a table a small table just with a box as long as it's pretty stable I don't want you to put your device in in jeopardy to do this but those are ideas that you could do to get your device into a good position so thank you for listening to all these ideas thank you so much for taking lessons from me and hanging in there through this crazy season and I hope you have a, a great week <laughs>